The first time I walked into a non-ethical factory, I realized that that wasn't the way that I wanted to build the brand of Step One. And I thought, if I'm gonna do this thing, I'm gonna do it right. I reckon I would have been to probably 30 factories before I found the one. I never honestly realized or could imagine that bad factories would be in such abundance. I've walked into a factory and seen brands that you're probably wearing right now making unethical products. It actually kind of breaks your heart when you see the conditions that some people have to work in. Imagine working in a space this big by this big for 12 hours a day. I had no idea that being ethically accredited was even a thing. Because this is actually the first time I've ever made clothes. So to find an ethical factory, I had to literally start from the start. How to find an ethical factory in China. Mm, first time I've ever seen Google come up with no results. <laughs> Every website I read said one thing. To be considered an ethical factory, you need a certificate. And those certificates come from one or two or three places, usually based in Europe, that will physically come out to the factory in China. They go through the factory top to bottom, and then if they pass, they pass. If they don't, they don't. Yeah, it's quite interesting. On the report, you'll see them, and they'll, like, they'll tick the box, and I actually have to take a photo. So be like, you know, is, there a, is there a first aid kit? Is there a fire extinguisher? Do they have clean drinking water, as an example? Is there a kitchen? Uh, is there a fridge? Like, is there a fridge in a workplace and there's like four or five hundred workers there? And then there's the stuff that we would never come across in Australia. Child labour, forced labour, fair working conditions, things like that that we would take for granted. But in those countries, that actually really happens. So that stuff is all in this report. But these things are a big deal. Each one of these reports costs over 100 grand, and they can get them for one, three, five years. So if I was gonna do this and find a factory that had the accreditation, I wanted to make sure that they would renew that every single year. So I started meeting with all these factories, and it wasn't just the accreditation that I found the challenge. I had to find another way to ensure that the right thing was being done, even when I wasn't there. So I had to find a factory that had three things. One, they were accredited. Two, it was done annually, and three, I could turn up unannounced at any time to perform an inspection. And so starts the hardest part of the rest of my life. Finding these factories is like a needle in a haystack. This factory, that factory, middle of China, outside China, on the coast, inside, on a train, on a plane, on a bus, middle of nowhere. It's everything at once and it's full speed. And then one day, I found the one. It's actually run by an absolute legend of a guy. Adam. Adam's a really young guy. He's probably my age, he's probably 35, 36. And to own a factory like that in China at that age is quite astounding. Adam's mandate was to have a factory that was both accredited and did very, very high quality products. So we shake hands and yeah, pay the deposit and we've never looked back. So the next minute we've got the underwear and the beauty of it is I know exactly where it was made, who made it, and it was made under ethical standards. So those DAX you're wearing, they're not only insanely comfortable, but they're also ethically made. 